Right, hello there and welcome to Devlog 5. Today's Devlog was supposed to be about environments, about making our game look good. But um, on my first attempt I got this. And let's be honest, it just doesn't look quite right. <laughs> it's actually really bad. So I deleted everything I'd done and started over. This time I tried to go for a bit more of a forest slash jungle style. I created some really nice pixel art of hanging vines with some flowers. But once I put them in, I realized they were just too stiff. I needed to animate them. And uh, that, <laughs> well, if you know me a little, you know that I suck at animation. So uh, it didn't turn out great. <laughs> so I deleted everything again. And just to add a little context, this was four days wasted. But anyway, I think you can probably understand that I was completely done with graphics at this point. I just needed to focus on something else. So I went to a little place I am going to call the testing chamber. Here I can work on programming and designing gameplay without having to worry about fancy animations, good looking graphics and um, well I think that's about it. <laughs> Alright let's get to it. So ironically the first thing I did was add graphical details to the testing chamber, specifically to a room I'm going to call the player switcher. And this is actually something we're going to have a lot of in our game. The player will be switching a lot between all kinds of different creatures. All these creatures will of course have different stats and will be controlled differently. This is to add some variety to the creatures, but also to include a bit of skill in what is probably going to be a very easy game. Right, so this is what we've got. When the player stands on the platform, their control of look will be taken away and after about a second they'll have control over the white cube. Sadly enough the recording is really laggy so you can't quite see it but currently the movement of the cube sucks. This is because we are using the exact same script that Luke uses too. And it works fine for him, but for the cube it isn't working. So I made a separate movement script for the cube. And in this one, unlike Luke's, I am using velocity and not position. And I'm curious to see what difference it makes. Alright, so you can now clearly see that the movement is just a lot smoother and the cube is now actually sliding. Which is something I really didn't want for Luke, but for a cube that we're probably going to use for platforming, it is really nice to have. But it was just a tad too much, so I tweaked around a bit, changing some of the settings and a bit of the code, and after a while I got a feeling pretty nice. But then I encountered a problem that is really annoying and I hadn't seen in about half a year, which by the way is when I was working on my first platformer. And that is the fact that the player sticks to walls when you keep pressing forward when against them. Like this. Uh, oh. <laughs> Well that's embarrassing. Right, so with the wall lowered a bit, this is what happens. It sticks, and we don't want that. So after a while, I finally fixed it. And the way you do that is by making sure there is no friction, and you do that by changing the physics material of both objects. And now, they don't stick anymore. And to be honest, the first time, this took me literally hours, maybe even days to figure out, so I'm glad I kind of remembered what to do. So then I created a little test platforming area. And you can see that it's all working. Um, oh, <laughs> that's not good. Uh, let me just fix that real quick. All right, so now that we don't get stuck outside the scene anymore, I can say that everything is working now. We now have a good character controller to do some platforming with. So now I want to work on something completely different, something I am not even going to come close to finishing in today's devlog. But what exactly is it? Well, um, I've probably put it in the title, so uh, maybe even in the thumbnail, so you probably already know, but um, it's it's weapons. Um, well, well, not even that, it's, it's a weapon pickup system, kinda. So, so that's fun, right? <laughs> But seriously, it's the first step in adding weapons to our game, so it's really important. Alright, let's get to it. Right, so the first thing I did, which may seem a bit strange, but I did the same thing with the player switcher, and that is work on some art for the weapons. So yeah, that I'm not going to work on graphic stuff. Yeah, I I'm not keeping to that. <laughs> I just enjoy doing it too much. Right, um, I'm getting off track. I made a pixel art pistol, some kind of bat with spikes, and a shotgun. I also put them in the game, and don't they look absolutely lovely? It's like you could just pick them up and go kill someone, which is, to be honest, a bit dark. Anyway, it's nice that we got them in the air and all, 
but I'd actually like to be able to pick them up. So I started writing a pick up script, which was really easy. But currently when you stand near it and click E, which is going to be the interaction button for this game, it just disappears and that's not really picking things up, is it? So I wrote some more code detecting which player the weapon is being picked up by, because we are trying to keep things relative, and then it makes the position of the weapon the same as the position of the player. And that looks like this. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's not too bad. It's, uh... No, it's bad. It's it's really bad. But that's why we're here in the testing chamber. It doesn't matter if it looks good. It just needs to be working. And this is working. But currently, you can't actually drop it. And that is a pretty important part of picking things up. I know it sounds weird, but it's true. So after a bit of writing code, you can actually pick the weapon up and drop it again. Good, so we've now got the system in place and there's only one thing I really want to add. That being a little E floating above the player's head when they are able to pick something up. So I designed this little arrow thingy, it looks decent, not the best thing in the world, but that isn't what we're going for. And then, believe it or not, I spent three hours trying to implement this thing. It was an absolute nightmare. This was because I really wanted the E to float up and down over the player's head, just to make it a bit more fancy. But because I'm really arrogant, I tried doing that with my own code knowledge, which really didn't work out. And the worst part about it was that the script was perfectly fine, it just didn't work. Everything theoretically about it should have worked, but it just didn't. Anyway, because I was completely done with making it look good, I just made it appear and disappear whenever you are able to pick something up. No fancy animations or good looking graphics, just a sprite renderer that gets enabled and disabled. It's uh, disappointing really. But to show that this code is relative and works on any weapon in any place, I placed three weapons down in our main scene, just uh, around the corner here. And you can perfectly pick them up and put them down. I also made it so that you can't hold two weapons at the same time. And that is it for this devlog. But before I end the video, I just really want to say thank you. Because we are currently really close to hitting 400 subscribers. And we might have already reached it by the time this video comes out. And that is just insane. Especially when you consider that this channel has existed for less than a month. So I know it's cliche and I know every YouTuber says this, but thank you. Really, you guys are absolutely awesome and absolutely mad. <laughs> you guys are watching a terrible game developer struggle to make even a decent game. But um, I still appreciate it, even if it feels undeserved, this whole channel has just been an amazing experience. So again, thank you. Right, so with that out of the way, I actually want to thank you again, this time for watching the video. Uh, make sure to like it if you liked it, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.